Okay, for the next topic, let us discuss the obligations and the rights of the vendor or the seller. Okay, under Article 1537, the, the, the obligation of the vendor is to deliver the thing. Of course, including the fruits, accessions, and accessories growing from the time of perfection. This is according to 50, Article 1537. So, therefore, under Article 1537, from the time of the perfection of the contract of sale, which is the giving of the consent or the meeting of the minds, okay, from that time, the, all the fruits, accessions, and accessories growing during that perfection will be delivered by the vendor to the vendee. Okay, number two is the obligation that the, the vendor has the obligation to transfer the ownership of the thing to the vendee. So you have to take note, class, na ang as a general rule, okay, the delivery of the thing okay, will also transfer ownership. Okay. That is applicable only if there is no other agreement that uh, the, wherein the vendor reserves the right uh, the, the ownership of the thing. Because there are uh, um, conditional uh, sale wherein the vendor will reserve uh, the ownership over the thing okay, for as long as the full payment has not been yet been made. Although, he may already delivered the thing to the uh, vendee. So, in that case, uh, there, there are actually two obligations there. The obligation to deliver and then later on to transfer ownership of the thing upon the, full, the payment of the full price. But in general, kapag uh, there is no uh, stipulations to the contrary, okay, the delivery of the thing will also be the transferring of the ownership to the uh, buyer or the vendee. Number three is to the, the vendor has to spend for the transfer of the ownership. Okay, pamasahe, bayad sa registration. Okay. Unless otherwise, the party stipulated other na the, it will be the buyer who will uh, will spend for this. So this number three, okay, to spend for the transfer of ownership is applicable only if there is no agreement to the contrary. Okay, unless the parties agree otherwise, then it will be the vendor who will spend for the transfer of the ownership. <coughs> number four is to warrant the thing. And we have discussed express and implied warranties. Okay, the vendor has the obligation to warrant the thing. If he made express warranties, then he is liable for that. Okay, he has obligated himself for that. While the implied warranties is by operation of law, is one of the obligations of the vendor whether he likes it or not. Unless the parties agrees to waive these implied warranties. Number five, okay, this is in your obligations and contracts. Pending the delivery of the thing, okay, the, the vendor has to take care of that thing before delivery. Okay. In general rule, using the diligence in the good color of the family or bonum pater familia, unless the law or stipulation of the party requires another standard of care. So, delivery. Let us discuss delivery. The, the, the vendor has the obligation to deliver. So, as you all know, let us revisit this from your obligations and contracts. Delivery or tradition. Maybe either actual or a constructive delivery. Of course, actual delivery is where the thing changes hands physically. Okay. And actual delivery, when you from your hand, you transfer it to the other. That is actual delivery. Okay, constructive delivery, maybe number one, traditional symbolica. You already know this. Like when you give the kiss to a bodega, that is symbolical tradition or symbolical delivery. Because you cannot <coughs> carry the bodega, you just give the key. That is tradition, traditional symbolic. That is a form of constructive delivery. Second is the traditional longa mano. Longa means long, mano means hand, or the long hand. By mere pointing to the object, like pointing to the car that will be sold, that is actually a form of delivery. Traditional brevi mano is delivery by brevi means short, mano means hand, so short hand. Okay, like when a tenant buys the house he is renting, 
formerly the house is not his but because he bought it the house is already uh, in his ownership and the seller will need, need not deliver physically the thing because the tenant is already in possession thereof the, that is a issue of okay <coughs> and the ang kabaliktaran ng brevimano is not long gamano plus sa ex itutong posisyon that is when like when you are uh, the owner of the house for example you are the owner of the house that you and then you sell it with the agreement that you will in return uh, rent it so as the former owner you need not deliver the house to the buyer because you will be possessing it not as an owner but already as a tenant that is constitutum possessorum or <coughs> by the execution of formalities or solemnities like when an obsolete deed of sale is executed for the selling of land okay, through papers, paperwork it is also delivery okay. <coughs> appending delivery or during delivery or during the contract okay, in case of loss and deterioration if you can still remember in your obligations and contracts we already discussed this Okay, who bears the loss or the term or deterioration of the thing okay so we have discussed in our previous subject that the party who is guilty of mora which is delay culpa is negligence or dolo fraud will bear the loss and deterioration and may be liable for damages for this mora culpa and dolo so you have to read the problem and the problem mentions mora culpa and dolo on the part of a particular party then that party who caused the loss of deterioration should bear the loss and should be liable for damages okay. the problem class is when there is no mora or culpa involved okay. there is no fault there is no delay or there is no negligence on either of the vendor or the vendi okay. who will bear the loss before the perfection the negotiation pa lang so, of course there is no contract you follow the spirit domino which means the owner follows the uh, no, no, the thing will follow the owner so if you are the owner of course the, the seller is still the owner then he will bear the loss this is before perfection at the perfection okay, there was already meeting of the minds without knowing that the thing involved has, is, uh, has been lost or has deteriorated okay. at the perfection because there is no more there is no more uh, object okay. the requisites of uh, contract of sale is COC consent object and cost or consideration or the price okay. because there is no more object then the sale cannot be cannot proceed and if I still again follow respirate the domino during that time, it is the the seller who is the owner of the perfection of the sale because there is not you no there is yet no delivery. Okay, and we already mentioned that delivery transfers ownership, and because there is yet no delivery, then the spirit domino, the owner is still the seller, and he will bear the less risk of loss. And the contract uh, sale may not proceed because there is no more object or subject matter. So number three, after perfection but before delivery. Okay. The contract of sale has been perfected by consent of the parties or the meeting of the minds, but the the object has not yet been delivered and it was lost or has deteriorated and there is no more culpa or dolo involved. Okay. There are two views actually class on this. Some authors would say the buyer, because there is already a sale, okay. Some author says that the buyer should still pay because it is not the fault of the seller that the thing was lost. Okay. There is already contract on sale and because the seller cannot anymore deliver without his fault, the, the buyer will pay, still will still pay him. That is one view. Okay. The other view is uh, because the seller cannot anymore deliver, he cannot anymore um, uh, demand payment from the 
buyer. So, these are the two views. Okay. Ulitin ko lang. First view is that this is not the fault of the seller. So, the buyer will still have to pay because there is a perfected sale. That's one view. The second view is uh, the seller cannot cannot uh, deliver because the thing is lost. Then, you cannot ask payment from the buyer. Okay. The first view, it is the buyer who will bear the loss. The second view, it is the seller who will, uh, who will uh, bear the loss. But my view is still respirate the mineral. We would like to uh, re, uh, adhere to the principle of respirate the mineral, personally. Because even if there is a contract of sale, there is still no delivery. And because there is no delivery, there is no transfer of ownership. And based on that, the seller is still the owner and he should bear the loss. That is uh, that is fair. Okay? And he should not ask payment from the buyer because the buyer will not receive anything in return. So, that is more fair that uh, the, the principle of the spirit will be more fair to the parties. Okay? But you have to remember class that in brevi mano, okay, even if the thing is still with the uh, seller, and because he has already considered to have delivered it to the buyer, so the buyer will bear the loss, even if it's in the position of the seller. Okay, in constitutional position of the resolute delivery to the seller, even if it is still possessed by the buyer, so the seller, seller will bear the loss. Iba sa brevi mano, shorthand. Yung seller is still in possession, but he, has considered, still, he is considered to have delivered to the buyer, but he is holding it in another in another capacity, then the buyer will still be the owner, and the buyer should bear the loss. Kabalik tala sa konstitutong posisuro, even if the buyer is still in possession, okay, he is considered to have delivered to the seller, so the seller will bear the loss being the owner of the thing. Okay, of course, deterioration is uh, some form of depreciation. The buyer will bear the deterioration. Upon delivery, okay, he will accept the thing even if it, is, if it has depreciated because there is no more full power dolo involved. Okay, number four, after delivery, of course, let's put it down. After delivery, the owner is the a buyer and the buyer will, will bear the risk of the loss. Sir, what if after delivery okay, the, the seller still uh, retained ownership or has reserved ownership? What will happen? You still call respirate domino because there was no transfer of ownership. The loss, because there is no fault, negligence, or fraud involved, the owner who is the seller will bear the loss even if the, the thing is in the possession of the buyer. The buyer is not at fault. So, you still follow respirate domino in all cases. So, those are the obligations of the seller. Let us now go into the rights of an unpaid seller or unpaid vendor. Uh, for this purpose, class, we will be using the word seller because the civil code has shifted from calling the seller, the vendor, to the unpaid seller. So, unpaid seller is also considered the unpaid vendor, of course. So, under 1846, 26, okay. The unpaid seller has the possessory lien or right to retain. We'll discuss this one by one. Number two is the, the unpaid seller has the right of stoppage in transito, has the right of resale and the right to resent. So let us discuss this one by one. Okay. The possessory lien or the lien that is uh, uh, pronounced as lien class not lien. So possessory lien or also called the right to retain is under Article 1527 to Article 1529. Okay. <coughs> Accordingly, the seller is not bound to deliver. The buyer has not paid the price for the goods. Okay. That is logical class. Uh, if the buyer will not pay, then the, the, the seller will not deliver. That is his right to retain the goods. Possessory lien. He will retain possession. 
you will remain in possession of the thing of the thing for as long as the buyer has not paid him so he retain niya he possess niya ang goods and will not transfer it to the buyer that is the right of an unpaid seller he need not notify the buyer essentially because the buyer knows he oh, is not entitled to the delivery because he has not yet been paid the seller could retain the, the goods and he did not tell the buyer about it because the buyer already knows that he has not yet been paid that he has not yet paid okay. the right to retain or the possessor lien cannot be availed when the seller is not anymore in possession of the goods for example dinili uh, pinadala niya na sa LBC of course he cannot exercise the right to retain because the goods is not with him paano niya retain nandoon sa LBC yung uh, goods paano niya i-possess yung goods eh nasa possession ng LBC okay but he can exercise his right of stoppage in transit which will be be discussed in the next slides Okay. So take note last, it is important to note that possessory lien or the right to retain is, is applicable only when the buyer, the seller, I mean, is still in possession of the goods. If he wants to stop the delivery of the goods, then he, he do not exercise the right to retain but the right to stop it in transit. Yun ang, ang, yun ang exercise niya, not this right to retain. Okay, when part of the goods has been delivered, yung na-deliver na cannot be subject to possessory lien. What can be subject to possessory lien is the remaining goods which has not yet been delivered. Pwede pa yun. Pwede pa yun ay retain. Okay. Because those goods that has been delivered, you cannot retain it anymore because you have delivered it. Okay. When can you, when can an unpaid seller exercise this right of possessory lien? Okay. Only in the following circumstances. Number one, when the goods are sold without stipulation as to credit. Meaning, okay, there is a, is a contract of sale and the, the, and the buyer has not yet paid and you have no uh, stipulation as to when will he pay. Okay, there is no condition, stipulation as to the payment, as to the utang, as to the credit. Then, because of that, the the unpaid seller don't know when the buyer will pay so he will still he will remain in possession of the thing or he will retain the thing for as long as uh, the, the the goods are not been paid <clears throat> second circumstance is when the goods are sold on credit but the terms of credit has expired oh utang utang on goods and then the term, the term uh, has expired, but the, the buyer has not yet, still has not yet paid. Then possessory lien and right to retake can be exercised by the unpaid seller. Or when the buyer becomes insolvent. A buyer is insolvent last when he is not able to pay his uh, debts because he has more liabilities than assets of course possessory lien and right to retain cannot be exercised by the, the seller if the goods is I am, I am i am i am referring to number two plus if the goods are on sold on credit pinautang but the utang is not yet due okay it's not yet due Therefore, the buyer is not in default or is not in delay. The delay, then the possessory lien and right to retain cannot be invoked because the buyer has still time. Okay. So these are the three circumstances wherein the um, uh, land page seller can exercise the right to retain a possessory lien, okay. provided that the uh, goods are still in his possession. So sometimes, class, the uh, possessory lien is lost. Number one, when the seller delivers the goods to the car the carrier or the 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 the, the bailey, ang tawag ko sa hay, bailey, for transmission to the buyer that the serving ownership, the goods are right to possess them. So kapag uh, 
pinadeliver na without reservation as to ownership. Then, Pasurilian is lost. But, remember, the right of stoppage in transito still remains, which will be discussed in the next slide. The buyer or his agent is already in local possession of the goods. Of course, the seller because cannot anymore retain the goods because the goods are already in the possession of the buyer or his agent. Number three, if the seller will waive the right, then the possessor lien is lost. Oh, next right, right of stoppage in transit. In transit class is a Latin word for in transit. The same like you. Okay. <coughs> Requisites. The goods are in transit. Okay, so the, the, the goods is already in transit. And therefore, the, the possessor lien cannot be exercised. The right to retain cannot be exercised. What can be exercised by the unpaid seller is stoppage in transit. And then the buyer is be, becomes, has become insolvent or cannot anymore pay the debts. Okay. Then, in that case, because this unpaid seller cannot anymore retain the good because it's, it's in transit, what he can do is exercise his right to stop, stop, the, stop this transit. Okay. And, uh, and repossess the items or the goods okay so stop stop the delivery stop the transit that is the right of stop this in transit why will the one page seller uh, do that because the buyer cannot anymore pay or has become insolvent when are the goods considered in transit of course when they are delivered to the carrier for the purpose of transmission to the buyer that is the goods are in transit or when the goods are rejected by the buyer, the carrier, carrier continues to possess them. Uh, ayaw tanggapin ni buyer. So that because the buyer has not received it, rejected it, okay, the, the, the goods are still considered in transit. So in these cases, this rate of stoppage in transit can be, can be exercised. Nandiyan ka sa video dong. <coughs> oh, when are the goods not in transit? Okay, when the, re when the goods already reach the point of destination, of course, there is no transit na. Before reaching the destination, the buyer met the seller along the way and gave the goods. Then the goods are not considered in transit because the buyer is already in possession thereof. Okay. Number three is the goods are not in transit. If goods are supposed to have been delivered to the buyer but the carrier, carrier refused, or this time naman, it is the carrier who refused to deliver to the buyer. Okay. In that case, the goods are not considered in transit. And the buyer is considered to be in possession of those goods. <coughs> How will the unpaid seller exercise the stoppage in transit? The seller obtains actual possession of the goods while in transit, stop the transit, stop the delivery, and repossess the goods. That is how stoppage in transit is exercised. And the seller gives notice of the claim to the carrier or the bailey who is in possession of the goods. Of course, in the, of course you have to notify the carrier to stop the delivery. Okay, that is important because the duty of the carrier is to deliver. So, to stop the transit, you have to notify the carrier to stop the transit, to stop the delivery. In this case, the seller is not duty bound to notify the buyer. Okay. The, the law requires only that he notify the carrier to stop the transit. The seller did not notify the buyer because the buyer knows that he has not yet paid and therefore he cannot expect delivery okay next uh, right right of resale benta sa iba na benta na sa una to the buyer pero pwede pa ibenta ulit sa iba that is the right of resale 
prerequisites. Number one, the seller has exercised a right of lien or stoppage in transito. Okay. So before the right of resale can be exercised, number one, the seller must be in possession of the thing through the right of lien. Or he has stopped the transit or the delivery and repossessed the thing. Why did he do this? Because the buyer did not pay. Why? Because uh, the seller cannot resell the item, if, if the goods, I mean, if the goods are not in his possession or he has not stopped the transit and repossessed the thing. So he cannot, in, so he must first, number one, be in possession of the thing through the light of lien or sufficient transit so before he can resell. Okay, when is the right to, uh, limited lang ang right of resale plus this is not applicable in all cases. Only number two, when the goods involved are perishable. Okay. Or, when it has been stipulated by the parties that the seller has the right of resale. So, if the goods are perishable and it is in, still in possession of the seller or in transit, and the seller has stopped the transit because the the buyer cannot pay or refuses to pay. Num the, if the goods are perishable, then the, the the seller will of course find other buyers so that the goods will not perish. Okay, when the goods are perishable class, okay, it is not needed na there is a stipulation that the seller can resell. Okay. By force of the of circumstances, the law says that the seller can resell if the goods involved are perishable and the buyer refuses to pay. Or in another case, if it has expressly agreed by the parties that the seller can resell the thing if the buyer cannot pay. Or of course, that is agreed upon. So the, the seller can, can um, take possession of the thing or stop the transit and resell it to another person. Okay. Then he can only do this if the buyer is in default of for an unreasonable amount of time. Right of resale. Take note last, before he can resell, the unpaid seller, unpaid because the buyer refuses to pay within an, a reasonable time, okay. he has to possess the thing either by right of lien or stoppage in transit before he can resell it to another person or another party. Take. Okay. Notice by the, by the seller to the buyer is also not required in this case because we all know the buyer knows he cannot expect, expect delivery and the seller may have sold it to another because the goods are perishable or they have agreed that the seller has the right to resell that it is not necessary for the seller to notify the buyer. In this case, the buyer may be made liable for damages caused to the seller. Of course, in the first two right, the right of the end, the right of stoppage in transito, the, 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 the unpaid seller can also file for damages because the buyer is refusing to pay. And it is the fault of the buyer in that case. The last right is the right to rescind or to cancel the contract. Okay. Requisites, the seller, again, has possession of the thing through right of the end or stop in transito. Stop niya muna. Why? Because he will cancel the, he wants to cancel the, the seller would like, the unpaid seller would like to cancel the contract of sale because the buyer uh, refuses to pay for an, a reasonable amount of time. So, so, if the seller wants to rescind or to cancel the contract, then he should take possession again of the goods through a right of lien or stoppage in transit. Okay. Especially, more especially when the right to rescind is expressly stipulated by the parties in the contract. Okay. Because the buyer, for the reason that the buyer is in default for the small time of time. So notice here, okay, this is the only time class that the uh, seller has to notify the buyer so that the buyer will not anymore expect that there is still an existing contract of sale 
While the buyer knows that he has not paid, he should be notified that there is no more contract of sale because the, buyer, the seller is rescinding the sale. Because the buyer is refusing to pay for an unreasonable amount of time. So in this case, of the right to rescind. If you are cancelling the contract as an unpaid seller, you have to notify the buyer about it so that the buyer will not anymore expect that there is still an existing contract. Of course, the buyer, the buyer may be made liable for damages caused to the seller for his default in paying. Okay, the yung rescission class, rescission with damages, the right to rescind. Double sale. Okay. Double sale means that the seller, tapos na yung rights class, ha? this one is another uh, uh, topic, double sale. Double sale is when the seller sells the same thing to two or more double pero pwede more two or more persons okay, double sale double sale kung dalawa lang persons multiple sale if there are several persons involved okay. so the seller is has I mean sold the same thing to two or more in case of multiple sale, more persons. What will happen? Who will will have who will have the better right? The rule class is he who is first in time is preferred in right. preferred. First come, first serve. In the case of movable property or personal property, okay. If the same thing should have been sold to different vendors, okay, the ownership shall be transferred to the person who have, who have first taken possession thereof in good pay. Kung sino yung unang nag-possess. Because the, the property involved is movable, it can be possessed physically, then the person who has first taken possession thereof in good pay. Take note last, the most important uh, uh, line here is that good faith. You know, good faith. Okay. Hindi lang siya basta na una, kundi dapat in good faith siya. Because if he is in bad faith, then the, the owner's ownership will be transferred to the next person. In case of immovable property, okay, if the same thing should have been sold to different vendors, the ownership shall belong to the person who, in good faith pa rin, important and good faith, number one, First recorded the deed of sale in the registry of deeds. Okay. So, sino yung naunang pumunta sa register of deeds para magpa-record? Kasi i-record yung sale doon sa, sa property involved, sa records ng property involved. So, kung sino yung nakaunang pa-register, even if di pa siya in possession of the thing, is in good faith. So, you may ask, what if there are several... Uh, when this and no one has went has went to the to the register of deeds to record the sale in that case if there is no inscription in the register of property then the ownership will be transferred to that person who first take took who first take so who first took possession of the immovable property but he must still be in good faith what if no one recorded the sale to the register of deeds no one took possession of the immovable property then in that case the person who presents the oldest title title class doesn't, doesn't only mean ka ng, uh, tan, uh, ng title ng lupa it may be also uh, anything that proves his title like, like the deed of sale the, the, the deed of sale with the oldest date okay? or any or any um, or any documents like receipt that will uh, show that he has acquired title to the immovable property. So the oldest date, the person with the oldest date who can present the document with the oldest date will be entitled to ownership over the immovable property provided he is still in good faith. So what is good faith? Good faith if one of the one person the person who buys has no notice or has no knowledge 
that another person is claiming it or, or, or has a right in such property. Dapat wala siyang alam doon sa other claimants. Because if he knows, then he's already in bad faith. The difference between good faith and bad faith class is of the knowledge. Knowledge lang. That another person has the right or interest in such property. So, pag sinabing list pendants class, there is an annotation sa the back of the of the title that the property is in litigation. Okay. So when the, the, the when the when the when the property is under court litigation, then the parties involved may uh, ask the register of deeds to 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 put into record that the, the, there is a list pendants or there is litigation in court ongoing. Pag sinabi naman adverse claim, another person who is claiming a better right can also go to register of deeds and have his adverse claim recorded therein. So, if you are a buyer and you went to the register of deeds and you saw in the register of deeds that there is a list pendants or an adverse claim, then you already have knowledge of these facts and you cannot anymore claim good faith if you still bought those properties. Okay. Well, that is the end for this topic.